as we go through our sample exercises or our example exercises, you're going to want to have these two documents open. On the left side of the screen, I've got the notes file, uh, inferential statistics about two or more means. And on the right side of the screen, I've got the analysis homework one document, which has both the example exercises and the homework exercise that you'll do on your own after each demonstration. Um, now this video is going to use SPSS, so in SPSS we want to have both the anorexia file and the family file open, which you can see that I have both of those open down there. Now, uh, for these exercises use the anorexia data file. This data was collected during, during an experiment to compare two new treatment plans for anorexia, a behavioral treatment plan coded 1, and a family treatment plan, coded 2. To those patients receiving treatment from therapists who have not been trained in either of the new treatment plans. Uh, thus, they are expected to treat their patients using current best practice, and we're calling this the control group, which is coded as group 3. All patients with anorexia in this data file are receiving treatment though the control group is not receiving either of the new treatment plans under investigation. Now, in this exercise, the example exercise, we're going to investigate this situation. So before investigating the effectiveness of either treatment group, the researcher wants to know if the body weight of patients with anorexia changes while receiving treatment. We want to test the difference using the paired samples t-test which is also known as the dependent samples t-test or the related samples t-test. Um, but this is the test that analyzes the same measure taken with the same participants under two different conditions. In this case, it's the pre and the post. So in our data file, the pre is taken here and the post is taken here. The first thing we need to do is to write the research question and the null and alternate hypotheses. Now the research question is going to follow a format that implies the test. So in this case, we're looking to see if there's a difference. So we're, we're going to use uh, the research question one model here since we're looking for a difference after something has happened. I'll write my research question here. So the question I've written, is there a difference between the body weights of patients with anorexia after receiving treatment? If we're going to include null and alternate hypotheses, which in the case of uh, quantitative analyses um, is somewhat considered standard, then we should enter those symbolically. So to do this, we're going to use the equation editor. Now, I could copy and paste from the notes document, but I want to show you how to use the equation editor as we do this. So let me maximize this file. And under the insert menu, we're going to click on Insert Equation right here. Now you'll see that it gives us sort of a, a pop-up box here for the Equation Editor. And you'll also see that it adds the Equation Tools Design Toolbar to the, to the ribbon here. This first pull-down area is really useful in that it gives you quick access to symbols that are commonly used in mathematical equations. Um, now we can find symbols that are not in this pull-down um, and we'll be able to do that in a little bit uh, with some of our other um, exercises, but most everything we need is going to be right here. Then there's also uh, equation formatting options here. So, for example, if we need a fraction, there's four different ways to, to write a fraction. If we need to use scripts, superscripts, subscripts, or both, there's ways to do that. 
Here we can click radicals, and, and when you see this dotted line box here, that's a place that you get to enter more content, right? So what I'm going to do is my hypothesis, put a colon. Now, if I highlight the H and come to script, grab this subscript box, gives me a spot here to put the zero. So H0 is that the population mean before treatment is the same as the population mean after treatment. So if we come to our pull down, the population mean is mu. So we'll click that. And the mu before is for the null hypothesis equal to mu after. So we're going to want to add a script here as well, subscript that. So mu pre is equal to mu post. Now that is our null hypothesis. And we can actually copy that to save us time entering the alternate hypothesis. So the difference for the alternate hypothesis is that instead of H0, we put H1. And instead of equal, the alternate hypothesis is that they are not equal. And that symbol is in the quick access toolbar. So there's our research question and null and alternate hypothesis. Now I need to run the analysis and paste the output here into this document. Now to run the analysis, I've come into SAS Studio and uh, you can see in my EdFi 7510 folder, um, I've got the anorexia data set here as well as the family data set, both saved as uh, accessible data tables. So I need to go ahead and open the program starter. So it assigns the lib name to my folder. And let me first save as, and I'll put that in my Ed 7510 folder uh, files, call it class 3B homework 1. Now, I can directly access the data tables that are saved in that directory or in, in that library. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into the t-test procedure. Now, as you can see, PROC t-test is the t-test procedure. Uh, it performs t-tests for one sample paired independent samples and the ABBA crossover design, which we didn't actually talk about. But um, so it'll this one will do both of the varieties of t-tests that we need. The general syntax, PROC t-test with some options, um, the class line identifies the categorical variables that are used to define groups. And then the var line would identify the continuous variables that you want to uh, compare the means of across multiple groups. Paired is the line that will tell us how to conduct a paired samples t-test. And I'm going to go ahead and open the, pro, uh, the documentation here. Um, here's the PROC t-test statement. Looks like that's the 12.3 user guide, the 13.1, 14.1. This is probably the most current, so I'll click that. Now, here's our basic syntax. Um, the options that I can put on the first line are listed here. Uh, I'm not actually going to dig into these options much. 
Um, but I am going to need a paired statement. So let me come to this screen. And you can see here that we're going to use the paired list or the, the paired statement and then we're going to uh, just type in the variables that need to get paired. Um, and you can see there in, in the table how those are interpreted. So by typing in A star B, it's going to compare A to B um, and it looks like it's going to subtract uh, B from A. So in much the same way that variable 1 and variable 2 in the same order that they're subtracted in SPSS, SAS does the same thing. So we're going to want to put our post measure first. Excuse me. We're going to want to put our... Um, no, I said that right. We're going to want to put our post body weight measure first so that the pre gets subtracted from it. So, here's where we put the paired line, and it'll be, now having just done that in the other video in SPSS, I remembered those names, but if we want to see what the variables are, we can double click the table, and we can see that pre-weight Post weight is entered this way. So I did post weight. Oh, and I typed the minus sign. It's actually an asterisk. So the pair is going to be post weight by pre weight. And then we need to run. So let's go ahead and run that code. And here's what it gives us. So the difference is post weight minus pre weight. It gives us the mean difference and the standard deviation of that difference. Now, this is giving us the uh, descriptives for the difference, not the descriptives for each measurement occasion itself. So we're going to have to use proc means to get that. Um, but it does give us our degrees of freedom, our t value, and the test of significance. So the probability is 0 0.004 while well, 0 0.005 uh, and so that does make our cutoff. Now we need to add, yep, we need to add a proc means. All right, so now we've got our t-test output up here. If we scroll down, there's the means procedure. This is everything that we need in order to write up our, our results. So now, to paste this in, I can uh, paste it in as a table, um, but sometimes it can be a little bit odd to fiddle with the formatting and get everything to work properly. Um, so I'm actually just going to take a screen clipping of it uh, using the snipping tool. Now, if you're not familiar with the snipping tool, then you probably don't already have it pinned to your taskbar like I do, but if you use a Windows machine and just run a quick search for snip, there's the snipping tool. Once you run it, you can actually then right-click it on your desktop and pin it to your taskbar. For me, it would be to unpin since it's already pinned, but for you, it'll look like this, so we can pin it to this taskbar. When I click on New, it allows me to draw a box around this on the screen, take a quick picture of it. There you go, so it saves that as a picture. I'm going to copy that, go back to my homework file, paste the means or the descriptives there, and then go get my t-test output. All right, so I've got everything I need there. Now I just need to write up 
the results. So let me bring my notes back up now. Um, when we're writing up the results, I've given you some, some boilerplate text here that you can take and modify. So in the paired samples t-test, it talks about writing up the results and it gives us text to use when there is no significant difference and text to use when there is a significant difference. Now, looking at our output, our p-value is here. Our alpha level is 0.05, and since 0 0.005 is less than that, this is a uh, significant result. So we'll go ahead and follow the format for when the results are significant. My general sentence is, on average, the body weight of patients with anorexia was different after treatment. And then I put the parentheses here to remind me to put the descriptives in there for uh, the after treatment measure. Then before the treatment, and I put parentheses again to remind me to put in those descriptives. And then comma, I left a spot there to put in the statistical text. Now. As it says in the notes, you can either give the standard error, or you can give a 95% confidence interval, or you can give the standard deviation. Um, all three of them will give the same information insofar as if you know the sample size for each of these groups, then you can derive any one of these measures from the other. Um, so I'll go ahead and report the standard deviation since that's the way that I normally do it. So after treatment, uh, the mean Then the t-statistic is reported in APA style this way. So I'll just copy that and paste it right in here. Now we have to go ahead and replace these numbers with the ones that match our output. Um, the 24 here for the degrees of freedom should be a 71. The t-statistic the t itself is 2.94. And the p-value, um, whenever the output displays 0 0.000, then uh, you have to put that p is less than 0 0.001. It's not actually equal to 0. The probability is never equal to 0. So um, when the probability gets so small that after rounding it is only displayed with zeros, then you have to put less than 0 0.001. Since this is actually a number we can type, change that to equal, 0 0.005. And I'm going ahead and rounding that since uh, 0 0.004 is displayed, but the very next digit is also displayed and when it's five or higher, we round up. Now, I need to report the effect size. Um, and we'll use this sentence. Again, I'll just drop that in there. The observed mean difference was not 4.96. That's the example text. The observed mean difference was 2.76. A 95% confidence, 95 confidence interval, uh, here it is, of the mean is 0 0.89. And the maximum 4. 
six four. Um, now we need to calculate our Cohen's d value before we can replace this text here. So if you look, there is um, a method here for calculating d as the mean difference divided by the standard deviation of the difference. Um, I have provided a an effect size calculator um, and in the previous video I went ahead and entered uh, group 1 as the post and group 2 as the pre um, but for this one I'm actually going to use this formula the mean difference divided by the standard deviation of the difference and so my mean difference is 2.7639 divided by the standard deviation of the dif difference 7.9836 so my effect size is 0.35 now when I look at the interpretation guidelines here, 0.35 lands between 0.2 and 0.5, um, and it's, it's a little bit more than halfway there, so I can refer to it as a small to medium effect. It would be inaccurate to call it a medium effect but it's also a larger effect than just small, so I call it small to medium. So I'll put which is a small to medium effect, and the D value is 0 0.35 and it's got the the Cohen citation here whenever you interpret effect an effect size you should cite where you got the interpretation of that effect size which is the Cohen article that you read in preparation for this class so that is how we work through the example exercise in SAS Go ahead and give uh, homework exercise one a shot on your own.